I want to deal with a few things that I'm seeing around the room and then I want to move you forward secondly. Here's the first one. Have a look at my writing here. Please do not write it down because it's wrong. That's why I've written it in red. I just want to understand why it's wrong. So have a look with me, okay? Firstly, let me just walk you through what I did. I was like, okay, look, this thing here, this is one of the chain rule things that we've been seeing over and over again. So um, I know this is the inside function, x squared minus 1. Is the derivative of x squared minus 1 2x, as I've written it? Looks okay. There it is, right there. Um, I then looked at the rest of it. And I said, oh, the outside function is this e to the power of a thing. And I know exactly what happens when you differentiate something like that. Answer, nothing happens to it. So I've written down exactly as it was. And then I just kind of tied it up in a nice, neat bow. Can anyone tell me what went wrong? Say that again a bit louder, Tavar. So, so Tavar's pointed out, when I first did questions of this category, in, you know, right at the start of the lesson. I said, this thing here, we should give it a name. We should do this substitution the proper way, let u equal that, then do my du on dx, and then chain my derivatives together, okay? Now, I like that Tafar's pointed that out. However, I will say, for things like this, once you start to get familiar with the chain rule, you actually totally can do this, and you don't need to spend so much time. So while I think that would be more What's the word I'm looking for? More comprehensive working out. I don't think it would be any more right or wrong than what I've already written here. I've just kind of taken the shortcut. Do you see something different, Sophie? Um, are you allowed to times the 2x and the 3? Am I allowed to multiply the 2x and the 3 times the other stuff? What do you think? I've just got 2x times 3 and I've written 6x. What do you think? No? no? People are not happy with that? No. What should I have done instead? <laughs> just, just leave it like that? Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow your little minds and I'm going to tell you, at least last I checked, 2x times 3, now I'm doubting my own arithmetic, 2x times 3, I'm pretty sure, is 6x. And one of the things about multiplication is that when you string together a bunch of things that are multiplied, like say for example, 7 times 4 times 5, right? We can say, all right, I can do 28 times 5 and I'll get the same answer. Yeah? Or I could do 7 times 20 and I'll get the same answer. Whichever way you do it, whichever way you combine these things, you'll still get uh, 140, right? So I'm going to go out and say, you know what? That is totally okay. There's something else missing. Something else a little more fundamental. And it's something I've seen written, whoop, flying pen. Uh, it's something else I've seen written on like at least half a dozen pages around the room. This same error, this identical one. Sorry. <laughs> Sarang knows because I pointed out to him about one minute ago, right? What's gone wrong? Answer, see this thing here? 3 e to the blah, 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 blah. Is that equal to this? No, it's not. It's not equal to that. What have I done? What was I describing to you, the process that I was doing? I, I was differentiating, thank you. So I was changing this quite substantially. It would be this error, this error, would be just like saying, if I gave you an exercise and it was all about taking the square roots of a bunch of numbers, right? Back to year seven or something like that. And I said, here's a number, right? And I said, take the square root. And you're like, I know what the square root of that is. It, it's equal to five, right? Now, this sentence is no more true than this one is, okay? You did an operation to this. How would I fix this? Because I can fix it, it's easy to fix. To make this, I would put a square root over it, and this is correct, okay? Now, in the same way, up here, how would I fix this? The thing I was doing was differentiating. So tell me that. Tell me right out the front, this is what I'm about to do, the derivative of that, and then this is all fine. Does that make sense? So I want you to look carefully at your working, and if you just instinctively wrote down the question, and then said, oh, the thing I'm supposed to be doing at the moment is in your case, differentiation, and then write the answer. Have a look, please, at your work, because I've seen a lot around the room. Um, that's not true. Tell me what you're doing. Okay? Now, having looked down here, uh, there's a very similar issue, very similar closely related issue. Have a look at it. This is also wrong. E to the power of da 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 da. There's my inside function. What's the derivative of the inside function? 3x squared. Take away 4, do you agree with that? No. Okay, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Again, you're making me doubt my own differentiation. This is fine, at least as far as I'm, I'm concerned. This is the derivative of the inside function, right? Um, this is the other outside function, e to the power of a thing, hasn't changed, okay? Where's the issue? I've given you a big clue, by the way, I talked about the first one, right? Yes? You didn't write 
question Yeah, thank you. So see in here, right? There's nothing there. Now this is very important. I did um, we had a conversation about this just before. D on DX, right? Which um, you can see here and here and all these kinds of these. It's what we call an operator. It's called the differential operator. Um, I showed you another operator just on the board, right here. The square root. It's an operator, right? It has to operate on a number. That's why it's called what it is. You've got to put something underneath here. Like if I said the square root of thin air, right? And then I put an answer out here. That would not make sense. Do you agree? You've got to tell me what is the thing you're taking the square root of. In this case, it would be 16, right? Now over here, I have to write, if you're differentiating something, tell me what you're differentiating. Don't have d on dx equals nothing. It's the same with square roots or logs or trig functions. Like you wouldn't say sine and then nothing. You'd say sine of an angle. Does that make sense? So we've been dealing with operators for a long time. You've got to handle them properly. Okay. I didn't ask you to write down any of that because it was wrong. I would like you to write down these though. So I asked you to finish your question underneath wherever you're writing. Put this in place. Now what we're going to do here is combine our understanding of calculus of exponential functions with, um, we did chain rule before, we're looking here at a, this is Sarang actually anticipated this, this is a product, and this guy here is not a product, it's a, it's division, it's a quotient, right? So let's rehearse, because it's been a little while, how to use the product rule and how to use the quotient rule. In each case, in each case, we're going to label each of the functions. One of them is u, and one of them is v. In the case of the product rule, does it matter which one's which? No. It doesn't matter. Because you can, you know, as we were just pointing out, you can rearrange a product and it doesn't matter which way you write it. Okay? Once you've labeled them as such, we can write the product rule in this very uh, compact and memorable form. V, u dash, plus u, v dash, which is very easy to pronounce. I pronounce it vuv. Okay, there you go, right? Can we do this? What's V? What have I labeled V? E to the power of, e to the power of X. Okay, the next part is U dash. I'm going to differentiate this first part here, which is 2X. I'm going to write that. Uh, I'm done with the first half. Now I move to the second one. The U in this case is? X squared minus 1. Right, the whole shebang. And then lastly, V dash. When you differentiate E to the X, what do you get? E to the power of X. Just E to the power of X. It doesn't change. So at this point, I've done all the differentiation, okay? Strictly speaking, I think that is fine, but we could tidy it up just a teeny bit more. Does anyone notice something in common between those two sets of terms? Oh yeah, that e to the x is in common, right? Very good. So I could factorize that out, and what does that leave me with on the right? Yeah, all of this stuff added together. I generally write them in the order of their powers, so this is probably the way that I would write it. So that's it. Okay. You're, you're waving hands at me and I don't know what you mean. <laughs> uh, okay, so you're thinking about factorizing further. I'm actually su going to suggest I don't think we can factorize any further, at least in this case. I'll leave that for you to have a think about. Okay. Let's have a look at this one now. Okay, so we're just rehearsing the product rule. Okay. Here's the quotient rule. Now, just like before, I'm going to label one of the parts u and one of the parts v. Does it matter which one is which? Does it matter which one is which? We said for the product rule, it didn't matter which one is which. You can call this one V and this one U if you like. Does it matter which one is which here? Yes. It does matter. Heck of a lot. Which one should we call U and which one should we call V? We'll go from top to bottom. That's U and that's V. Why does it make a difference? Hmm. I, I really want you to think about that. Strang's sort of on the right track, but I don't think he's got it. Why does it matter here? But it doesn't matter here. Oh, wait, that's what, what do you think, Sophie? You're multiplying, so you can multiply in any kind of order you want. Cool. That, but like division, you know, you've got to be specific with which terms that do what. Fantastic, thank you very much. Let me just rehearse that, right? When you're multiplying things, I think you should nail it perfectly. Doesn't matter whether you say 2 times 4 or 4 times 2. They're the same thing, yeah? But when you're dividing 2 over 4, is not the same as 4 over 2. So you can't just like call whichever one you'd like, right? So once you have appropriately labeled each one, the question rule, if you write the product rule like this, the question rule writes very similar, right? You're going to have the same v u dash and the same u v dash. What's different? It's a minus, very good, not a plus. And then there's another difference. It's the question rule. So this derivative is going to be itself a quotient. What's on the bottom? Over v. 
squared. V squared, fantastic. So, I've set up the question rule, and now I'm ready to use it, okay? Vulv on V squared. Alright, help me out. Um, okay, now I've, I've picked these because they're the same ones you knew before, so we can just fit them into different spots. Is that okay? So, we already know what V is. It's e to the x. We already worked out what u dash was. It's 2x. And in fact, I can rehearse my whole front first line here, right, with a minus sign instead of a plus. So let's put in that x squared minus 1 and that e to the x, like so. Then comes my denominator. What's my denominator going to be? Um, so put the e to the power of x in brackets. Yeah, very good. So this is v. That's v right there. So I'm going to square the whole thing, e to the power of x, as somebody suggested, in brackets. Then I square it. Okay. Now at this point... Yes, I can, I can simplify further, can't I? Let's do a bit of simplifying. So on the top, just like earlier, I'm going to factorize stuff out. Just be careful. Be super, super careful. See that minus sign? This is like a silly mistake waiting to happen. Okay, you've got minus signs interacting with minus signs. So I'm going to do this real carefully. e to the x out the front. Okay, I've got the 2x comes first. Minus the x squared. That minus and that minus. That's a plus. Very good. So that's there. Numerator is done. Denominator, what was your suggestion string for how to simplify that? E to the power of 2x. Fantastic. Those two powers there are just going to multiply together. E to the power of 2x. But wait a second. I can go further, can't I? Have a look. You remember how we factorized, right? So we saw, oh, that e to the x is in common on the numerator. But there's an e to the x in common with the denominator as well. Do you agree? Like that is e to the x times e to the x. That's where we got it from, right? So if I cancel e to the x on the top and the bottom, what will I get? Okay, I'm going to get this stuff here. 2x, sorry, that's an equal sign, minus x squared plus 1, all divided by? All divided by? E to the x. E to the x, because one of the e to the x is cancelled. Does that make sense? Okay, I cancel one off the top, one off the bottom. I am done. Okay? What do you think? So there's kind of like two stages, if you like, to how we think about this. First, you do the calculus bit, and then you have to think about all your algebra and your simplifying index laws and so on. Okay?